Hey guys, it's Kay from KS Anonymous. Today I'm bringing you some things from r slash am I the a-hole. So I'm going to actually abbreviate this to r slash Ita. Now this first one is someone who is having trouble with their friend and boundaries with their boyfriend. My friend and I have known each other since freshman year, before she met my boyfriend, but they knew each other before I met him and we started dating. She has a rather naturally flirty personality, which I'd honestly rather believe than think she's up to anything malicious. Well, he recently admitted to me that he actually used to have a crush on her, which is understandable because she's drop dead gorgeous, with the personality to match and super charismatic. Pretty much everyone has or has had a crush on her. It had me feeling a bit insecure, especially since she's a very affectionate friend towards everyone. Hugging, holding hands, sitting on their lap, all that. So I asked her to tone it down a bit when it comes to him to quell my irrational concerns. Well, her response was to invite him over to her house yesterday. Just them. The only reason I knew they met at all was because I saw it on her Snapchat. Cook for him and ask him to be her date for prom since she claimed she couldn't find one. I'm not going to prom myself, so it's not that I'm upset he won't be going with me, but I'm still upset that she's not honoring my wishes and seemingly just paying him even more attention. I was venting to a mutual friend of ours and she said I was acting like an a-hole for even making the request because our friend was not required to at all cater to my insecurities. She should be able to touch him and spend one-on-one -on -one time with him because I should just trust that they won't do anything. I feel guilty for being upset because she absolutely has a point. I guess the timing of it and the fact that neither of them told me or invited me to hang out was what really hurt me. Ida for feeling hurt or angry? So what are your thoughts on this? Because I really think she's 100% in her rights to be a little bit irritated about that. I think people need to have like a healthy boundary when it comes to relationships and stuff like that. And I've never been a fan of people like sitting on each other's laps and stuff like that. I know that's a common thing. It's just, it's a, I think it's a little far, but that's just my personal opinion. But especially when someone that's your friend's boyfriend and then to have them over your house privately and not even mention it, I think she's going far too far and I think the mutual friend is full of it. That's my thoughts, but I want your thoughts. So let me know what you think about this one, if they are being the a-hole or if someone else is or what's going on here. Let me know in the comments below. So our second Ida for this video is about a young man who was leaving his girlfriend and what ensued basically. Recently, I broke up with my girlfriend of about four months. I took her on a walk because we live fairly close together and she wanted to see me and walk the dog. I planned on ending it on her porch where she could just go inside and I would know she was home safe, but when we got closer, she saw her mom was outside smoking and she just turned around. So we walk back further up the block and we sit down. I start explaining how I only have three months or so before I have to leave because I'm enlisting in the Marines and she's a year younger than me and on a completely separate path. I explained how we are delaying the inevitable and that we needed to break up. She starts freaking out. Her voice gets high pitched and nasally and she starts talking really fast. She seemed to not even think that it was even a possibility that we would end things. She starts talking about how, oh, during World War II, the men would leave and the women would stay behind and wait, and all this stuff. She wanted to do long distance, and I just can't. I explained I don't do long distance because of trust issues I have since ex number one. She interrupts me and says, but you know I'm not like her, and all sorts of things. Anyways, I keep my ground and I'm still kind to her when we break up. This is where things get messy. So anyways, we get past the hard things and I ask if I can walk her and her dog home to make sure she's okay. She said no, but I waited and felt bad because she was still crying. She kept saying, I don't understand why it has to be now, and such. I continued to keep my ground and be firm so that I wouldn't be pressured into continuing the relationship. I ask again and she starts throwing a tantrum. I stood up and literally begged her to let me walk her home. I said, it's cold, your dog is shivering, please let me walk you home. And she got really upset and literally said, I'm not cold. No, I'm not getting up. I'm not moving. 
I am not leaving this spot. So after asking her multiple times and getting the same answer, I told her goodbye. Text me when you get home so I know you're safe and walked home. Then I went to hang out with some buddies who knew I was ending things. She ended up texting me later and told me she got home. I said, I'm glad to hear you're home safe. And she said, it's only because my dog was cold. I told her I was sorry. The next day, I was gone from school for medical reasons. Anyways, while I was gone, she asked my friends about how I was doing, etc. And they said that I was good, that I was waiting for my stuff, etc. And she said, well, that's good because he left me in the cold for 40 minutes. I felt like I did everything I could in this situation except physically pick her up and carry her, which would have been completely inappropriate given the context. So, Aita for leaving my ex on the sidewalk because she refused to handle the breakup maturely and threw a tantrum? Like, no. I don't think so, but I want your guys' thoughts on this. Like, what do you think? Like, do you think she has a right to be mad that she got left on the sidewalk in the cold? Or is this guy not the a-hole? Because I don't think, I really don't think he was personally, but I want to hear your thoughts on this story in the comments below. So this last story is about an obese man and an airplane seat. So this month I was flying across the country on a long five hour flight, which I had booked and selected the seats for. I specifically chose an aisle seat in a row of two so that there'd be no middle seat, just the aisle and the window. Well, a very obese man boards and I can tell instantly he is going to have a tough time fitting in any of the seats. I assume maybe he bought two, hence why he's even attempting to board. I'm mentally crossing my fingers he's not next to me, but sure enough, he ends up pointing to the window seat next to me to let him in. I get up and let him in politely, wanting to at least give him a chance. Well, he sits down and is easily seeping into about one third of my seat. I sit down and am pressed up against him, making me uncomfortable. After a minute, I decided to be upfront and tell him, Sir, I'm sorry, but the situation is not working for me. You're taking up quite a bit of my seat. He wasn't rude, but sort of gave me a shrug as if there's nothing he can do. Although he did sort of tighten his arms in to try and be narrower. It just wasn't enough though. He still was overhanging over the armrest about a fourth way into my seat, even when squeezing his arms in. I'm talking about fully hanging over the armrest into my seat. I end up stopping a flight attendant and ask her what can be done about the situation. She instantly tells him that he is likely going to need to purchase another seat. She goes to the front and comes back saying that there aren't any open seats on this flight, so there wasn't a way to move people so he could have two. This causes a very awkward silence. The guy seemed embarrassed and didn't want to get up. He mentioned how he can't wait for a later flight. I felt bad for him, but I was also thinking about my own comfort on the long flight, the comfort I paid for. The flight attendant tells him that unless someone on the flight agrees to let him take up part of their seat, he'd have to book another flight. The guy seemed really flustered by this ultimatum, and here's where I made my offer. I told the guy, look, I'll put up with this if you give me $150. That's half the cost of this flight and that would compensate me enough for the circumstances. He instantly agrees, pulls out cash, and pays me. He even told me he appreciated it. Well, the people sitting behind me, who, keep in mind, didn't volunteer to sit by him, were making under their breath comments about me being an a-hole for doing that. I just ignored them and put the cash in my wallet. From my perspective, I gave the guy a valid option to stay on the flight and I was compensated for literally having only 75% of my seat max, let alone the feeling of a person's body pressed against you involuntarily. A win-win. He wasn't angry at all. If anything, he seemed quite relieved we could work it out privately. After the flight, the couple behind me glared at me, but I ignored them. This leads me to beg the question, am I the a-hole? On this one, I don't think so. I mean, the guy was going to pay for another seat anyway, and this guy paid for a seat that didn't have someone else kind of in it, you know? Like, I really don't like strangers touching me at all, so I really would not be okay with someone touching me the entire time. I know it wasn't really in his control, but like, at that size, you usually are conscious of the fact that you might take up more than 
a designated seat on an airplane. So I don't think so. I think he was in his right. But what do you guys think? Do you think that was like awful for him? Do you think he should have just dealt with it? Do you think the guy should have tried to get another flight? Do you think that the people behind him were correct? Let me know your thoughts if he was the a-hole in the comments below. That's actually it for this video. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and drop a like. Let me know what you think about all three of these stories, if they were jerks or if they were justified in their actions. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye!